In order to understand the widely diverse ecosystems that make up the Gulf Coast region, it helps to spend some time in them. When Mark LaSalle offered me a seat for a tour of the Pascagoula River, I jumped aboard Benny McCoy's 24-foot tour boat to explore the swamps and bayous that few people take the time to see. It's like I tell most people, uh, where we go today is pretty shallow, so you normally you can stand up where we're at. So oh, okay. If you find yourself in water, don't drown, just stand up. <laughs> I've seen a lot of bait fish out this morning. You look up there in the, in the bow there, you see where it looks like rain up there. That's little bait fish. Most of this, this time of year is menhaden or or what we call pogey fish here, they catch. If you go to Louisiana, don't call it no bow, by the way. Call it a bayou or you're gonna get laughed at. But, but I call it a bow, that's the way I was raised saying it and that's the way I say it. So the word bow actually comes from a Choctaw word and it means slow moving water. And this water slow moving is because this operates off the tides. It comes in and out and uh, easing in and easing out as, we, as the day goes by. We are up on a high tide this morning, and everywhere we go today will be influenced by the tides. You know, we're close enough to the Gulf that we get our saltwater intrusion up in our rivers, and this is actually what they call brackish water. It's, this is a great area to fish in because you can catch your saltwater right along with your freshwater species. Right in this same bow, you can catch a redfish one cast and turn around and catch a bass the next one, so that's pretty neat. That's one reason why I like to fish down here in the lower end. What's so important about the marsh area, you know, it's, uh, if you like to eat seafood like I do, <laughs> I do too. Well, that, this is where it all starts at right here. This is like a big nursery out here. Everything's raising little ones. And all this grass that you see, it's very important too. It gives all the little critters a place to hide. And uh, the one with the brown seed heads that we're passing, kind of a yellowish looking plant, that's the, the saw grass that we have. And then the uh, plant mixed in with it, but it's real sharp pointed. That's the black needle rush. And both of those make up a lot of our marsh area right in here. And both of them can tolerate a little bit of salt, and that's why you see them in here. Yeah, this nest right here is actually an osprey nest. See the big nest here to the left of us? And an osprey is a uh, fish eating bird. He's uh, a lot of people call him a, a fish eagle. He's actually in the eagle family, but he's not as big as the bald eagle. That little houseboat over there to the right of us is the one that got put up on the hill there in Katrina. It got kind of tore up. If you look up here to the left of us up on this bank right here, you'll see some big, them big black grasshoppers. Them is called lubers. They're in the grasshopper family, but what they're doing, they're laying eggs. After they get through laying their eggs, they'll actually die. So they only live for a few, uh, few months, actually. And of course, the Pascula River gets its name from the Pascula Indians that once lived here. And them and the Biloxi tribe were the two tribes that lived on the southern end of the river here. But you know this river uh, is getting worldwide attention now. Actually, it's the largest free-flowing river in lower 48 states. That means it has no dams on it, so that's very important for the Gulf sturgeon, one of the larger fish in our river. It actually lives in salt water, but it comes up in our freshwater rivers to spawn. And if you have dams on it, they can't get over the dams to get to their spawning areas. See the little yellow crown that here and right here? Now he's a young one. He don't know to be scared. Now when he gets, uh, you see how spotted he was, how camouflaged he was. When he gets grown, he'll he'll lose all that. He'll actually get a green neck and green head, and he'll have a, a yellow crown on him. And that's where he gets his name, yellow crown, not here. But when he's young, he's got that color on him, kind of camouflaged. If you look back in this opening right here, you'll see where the uh, alligator's been going back and forth in there. And back in the back is actually where her nest is. These ought to be hatching out any day. I wanted to make sure there wasn't no little ones in there. Now this plant on both sides of the boat here out in the water that's starting to seed out, this is the wild rice that we have. And this is the same wild rice that you can buy in the stores. Actually, uh, they still harvest it around Minnesota and Wisconsin area. And it's not actually a true rice, it's actually just a grass seed, but it's very, uh, very good to eat. Over here to the left of us, you'll see a great egret over here feeding uh, in behind that wild rice there. Now we're starting to get in the edge of the swamp, and you know the only difference in a swamp and a marsh is a swamp has trees and a marsh don't. So they're both considered wetland, both very important. And 
when you start seeing your trees, you know you're mostly running out of your salt water. It's getting more and more fresh as we head north. The uh, fan-shaped fan up there that we're starting to see, that's the, one of the palmettos that we have. And it's one that the Indians here would use in their roofs of their houses. Little tiny white flowers you see in on the little bushes there, that's called white bushy aster. It uh, kind of looks like that baby's breath that you see a lot. And then you see some pink ones back in there behind there too. That's the marshmallow. They're in the hibiscus family. They are in the same family as the okra and the cotton. And that's where the marshmallow gets its name, is from the marshmallow plant. The uh, lily pad looking plant out in the water that's got the little yellow flower, that's called spatter dog. And it's in the lily pad family, but it don't get the lily like the lily pad. It gets that little yellow flower. It looks almost like a ball, actually. Oh, well, that's a fiddler crab. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the one with the big claw. The one with the big claw is the males. One of the purpose of the big claw is to attract the females, so a lot of times they're out here waving their claws just trying to get them a girlfriend. So. Ah! <laughs> oh. This next little bow here is probably one of my favorite. It's, uh, this is called whiskey bow, and it's, I'm sure sometime, sometime in the past it probably had some whiskey stills in here at one time. And, during Prohibition Day, that was a big industry along the river, actually, was the rum runners. Now, all these trees that's blown over right here to the right of us is all cypress, bald cypress. And you know these trees that grow out in the swamp, they don't have to hunt for water, so they're all pretty shallow rooted. And yeah, as you can see, they uh, makes it pretty easy for them to get blown over, actually. A lot of these trees actually are still living. They just blowed over. But... And I tend to think maybe there was a... Uh, twist or something during the hurricane here or something. It looked like in this one area there were a lot of trees down. See the red maple's already starting to turn. Yeah. What are these, what are these, uh... That's called a giant orb oh. spider. Oh my god, that's cool. Actually, oh, I, see it it's cool. Cool. I want to take a picture. Can I take a picture? Yeah. Now, the wow. smaller one would be the male Oh on yeah, the you see the one up there in the, in the other tree? Wow. Oh. You said the smaller one's the male? Yeah. You see the, the uh, their uh, web is made out of gold and silk. See the gold? Yeah. That's one of the only spider that has the gold and silk like that. Can we see the females got to take care of the males? Man. Yeah. Don't they, eat the, don't they eat them? Yeah, they do eat the males sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's I'll tell you what, us males get treated bad out in nature, let me tell you. At <laughs> 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 home, too. Uh, uh, Here's another look at your cypress knees sat in the water. What we call cypress knees, it's just the roots of the bald cypress. And it, they won't never be a tree or nothing, it's just part of their root system. And when I think of a swamp, that's the first thing I think of is a cypress knees. It's back when I was a kid, they used to make a lot of uh, lamps and furniture out of that. Real beautiful wood in that cypress knee. Real pretty. <laughs> Here's a good look at your bald cypress. So they have the big swollen buttress, but they have, look like it's got muscle around it. You know, like, like your boyfriend, you know, got muscle. I see some Spanish moss here. You know, uh, we lost a lot of our Spanish moss out during the storm. It blowed a lot of it out, but it's uh, starting to come back pretty good now. And you know, a lot of people think that, that a Spanish moss is a parasite, but actually it's not. It's in the gets all the moisture and nutrient needs right out of the air. And it's actually in the pineapple family. It's called white bushy aster. Bushy aster. This one of the aster. There's a lot of them plants this time of year that's a different type of aster. And that one's called white bushy aster. They're in the aster family. This lake right here, we're just coming out into this is called Buzzard Lake. And you see the houseboats over here to the right of us. That's actually uh, on private land. There's over 170,000 acres protected along the river basin. And on that land, they don't allow no houseboats or camp. The last time we uh, had manatees up in the river, this is where I seen the manatee last within this lake. And they was actually feeding on this spatter dock over here on the side. I thought maybe this little alligator would be right in here, but I don't I said there's one on the dock, that little piece of dock. 
You know, this area also has a lot of history behind it, a lot of uh, river here in this area, down south Mississippi. Actually, uh, back when the French first possessed this, is actually, and after they left, the Spanish took over for a short period of time. But you know, there for a short period of time, this was actually its own country. It was actually from Baton Rouge all the way to Pensacola. It was actually the Republic of West Florida. Before the uh, before America took over, but this this area actually, the city of Moss Point here in the uh, city of Pascoe, was pretty much built around the the lumber industry, and they was cutting a lot of back in the 1800s, especially in the 1870s. Actually, it was the number one lumber port on the Gulf Coast. It outperformed uh, any other port on the Gulf Coast, and that went all the way up to the mid 90s, 1900s actually, that when the lumber was there. A lot of lumber floated down the river. At one time there was 12 operating sawmills here. But you know, back before we had the oil, we actually uh, we also had what they call naval stores, which was nothing more but pitch and tar and uh, turpentine and from the pine trees. And that's what kept our sailing ships and all going back in them days. Back in 1800, back before we cut a lot of the pines, actually the uh, pine savannah stretched all the way from the Carolinas all the way to Texas. And uh, mostly longleaf pine. And they say about 80% of our longleaf pine habitat's actually gone now. Replaced by the hardwoods. As we headed home, I knew that even after two hours on the river, I had only seen a fraction of the life in the tall grass, wild rice, and tupelo trees. So much of it is hidden deep within the weeds or below the murky water. To learn the secrets of this nursery to the Mississippi Gulf Coast would certainly take years, and still, there would be more left unknown.